released, newly released footage from the set of Alec Baldwin's movie Rust, obtained exclusively by NBC. It shows Baldwin firing a prop gun on set and giving out safety instructions and directorial instructions just days before the fatal shooting of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Watch this. One more, one more, one more. Now, wait a second. If I'm going to shoot right, do you want to go on the other side of the camera? I don't want to shoot toward you. Okay, right here. Okay, I want to shoot close to you. So that's the image you remember right after the shooting and killing of Helena Hutchins. Baldwin could, chase, could face new charges of involuntary manslaughter from a grand jury. The actor maintains he's innocent and that he never pulled that trigger. Steve Wolf is a weapons safety expert for films. He's a consultant for the prosecution of the uh, criminal case and engaged as an expert witness on the civil suit. Steve, good to have you back uh, here with us. I know that you have said that it would be impossible for the bullet to eject from that uh, pistol without pulling the trigger. But let me just get your thoughts uh, first on that video that we just saw. What, can you take anything away from that, given what happened the next day? Uh, absolutely. Uh, what I could take away from that is that, you know, a Alec did have an awareness of firearm safety, that uh, he was aware that the blanks could be dangerous. He stated right there, you know, I don't want to shoot this towards you. Could you move to the other side? Uh, so so he knew gun safety. The thing is that gun safety are rules, not suggestions, which is to say you you have to follow them all of the time. So the fact that he followed them on a Monday but didn't follow them on a Tuesday, you know, doesn't excuse uh, that, that accidental killing. So with regard to this case, which, you know, he, he, it looked like he was off the hook, but now there is this new case. Can you tell us anything about what you're learning from this part of the legal process? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of legal wranglings going on and uh, back and forth between the prosecution and the attorneys. But ultimately, it comes down to if the gun is in your hand, you're responsible for what happens with it. If you don't know how to check it, you ask someone, the person should check it in front of you, show it to you, teach you how to do it. And, you know, he's got the familiarity. He described on his ABC interview exactly what it looks like when you work with the proper armorer how they check it, they open it, they hand it to you. If you mess with it, they take it from you, they scold you, they give it back to you. And none of that happened on this set because they had a very inexperienced armorer. But ultimately, if, if the gun is in your hands and something bad happens, you're res you have to take responsibility for that. So, and he also said in that ABC interview that he didn't pull the trigger. Uh, you know, yeah, your thoughts on that? That would, be, that would be contrary to my opinion and that of the FBI. Uh, the the reason that I think he could think that, though, is that because on these these uh, single action guns, it's such a short trigger press to activate it. Yeah. So if he was just holding his finger on the trigger, not aware that he had moved it that tiny bit, and then he pulled the hammer back and released it, the gun would fire uh, without him being aware that he had directly pressed it. Because he thinks you have to press it after you cock it. But in fact, if you're holding the hammer back, and press, pull the hammer back and release it, the gun's going to fire. So yeah. uh, there's no evidence that there was anything mechanically wrong with that gun, that it, it performed exactly it was, as it was supposed to. And the gun that we see him using in the video that we just watched is a prop gun, right? But that's not... No, well, no. Go ahead. So it's not an inert gun. It's, it's a gun that's designed to fire blanks mm -hmm. and potentially to fire live ammo. And we can't tell from that video whether that gun had had a restrictor installed in it so that it could only fire blanks. But based on uh, the fact that likely that same gun is the gun that killed Helena Hutchins, that gun was a real gun and it had not been modified. And so we shouldn't say it was a prop gun. Uh, if it can shoot blanks or if it can shoot live ammo, you know, it, it's a real gun. So you believe that the next day it was a real gun that someone put real ammo in? It's not just that I believe it, it's a fact, right? There, there was live ammo in it. The ammo did come out, out. The gun was capable of firing the ammo. There's no reason to think that wasn't a real, regular, unmodified gun. And yeah. that's the kind of guns that kill people. So uh, you could work backwards or forwards. In, in any case, it's not a prop gun. It's a real gun. All right. We'll see what the outcome is uh, of this case. Thank you, Steve. Good to have you back on the program. Um, and Thanks, we will uh, see...
where how it all ends up. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.